talk a bit about community supported restaurants. Um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with that term, um, but a number of years ago, I was working for ACORN, uh, the Atlantic Canadian Organic Regional Network, and an article came across my desk there that talked about Hardwick, Vermont. Um, it was a really interesting story. Basically, the town's economy had collapsed um, when the granite industry shut down. And they started to look back to their agricultural past and reinvented themselves as a major food produ producing town. Um, so there was all sorts of really interesting sort of little stories within that story about business, different business models, um, cooperative development projects, and sort of symbiotic relationships between new businesses in the town. Um, and I would encourage anyone who's at all curious to check this article out. Um, and among those interesting startups was a restaurant called Claire's. So this town was now producing all sorts of really fantastic food, world-class cheeses, fabulous fresh produce, but there wasn't really anywhere in town to eat it. So they decided to start this restaurant and um, they used what they call a CSR or community supported restaurant model. So I don't know if anyone here is familiar with CSAs or community supported agriculture. Uh, anybody? Yeah, okay, I thought so. So basically the idea with the CSA is um, if you're interested in getting fresh local food, you um, pay a farmer for that food in advance. So at the beginning of the season when they need the money to go out and buy seeds, um, to buy tools and infrastructure, and then they give you food over the course of the season, you get a basket every week, say, filled with whatever is coming out of the garden uh, that particular week. Um, so a CSR is basically a restaurant where if you want to see this restaurant in your town, you buy a subscription uh, before they open, which helps them to get up and running, and then they pay you back in food or meals at the restaurant. So I kind of filed that away for a bit. I thought that's a really interesting model, and it kind of makes restaurants seem a little more uh, possible, but didn't really think much more about it for a few years. Um, so eventually, my partner Terry and I had gotten to a point where we were both thinking about wanting to do something a little bit different um, than what we had been doing. And we started thinking about a way to make a living out of what we were both really interested in. So we have really unique interests. I'm interested in food, and Terry's interested in beer. Um, maybe some of you can relate to that, I don't know. Um, so we were trying to think, uh, we thought, yeah, let's start a little a brew pub. We can make our own beer, we can serve local food, um, and we were thinking about where to do it. At the time, we were living in Southfield, New Brunswick, uh, a small town not unlike any Ganesh with the university and the sort of rural community. Um, and we were trying to decide where to do it. So one of the things that Danny mentioned in his talk earlier was about um, Nova Scotia being a place of sort of community and relationships. And we were pretty sure that there was a demand for the type of place we had in mind in both towns. So both towns had restaurants, they had pubs that maybe catered more to students and turned into dance clubs at night, but neither of them had a place where you could go, just have a pint, or meet up with friends, get some good food, um, but in a really relaxed sort of neighborhood environment like you might find in England or Scotland. Um, so we actually chose Annie Ganesh over Sackville, largely on the strength of the connections and relationships that I had developed here by growing up here and working here over the years. Um, I mean, another big advantage to Annie Ganesh that was that there would happen to be a lot of really exciting local food initiatives sort of starting up at around the same time. Um, Voices was getting into community gardens. My sister and her husband were starting a CSA. Um, short time after, Bethany would start the garden, market garden training program. And it just sort of seemed like Annoyed Art Farms had just opened and was producing organic cheese just outside of town. So it seemed like a good time, and after all, here we are at the Cody, the home of cooperative development, asset-based community development. It just sort of seemed, if a CSR is going to work anywhere, it's, it's going to work here. 
So, um, basically what we did was borrow the model more or less wholesale from Claire's uh, in Vermont. We actually spoke to the manager there just to ask them a few questions. They, were, they share all kinds of information on their website about how it was structured, but we had some questions about the logistics and how you manage your cash flow if people are coming in to, to get their free food all the time. So they were really helpful, really um, generous and positive about it. Um, so, and we also have looked at a number of other different sort of crowdfunding or community supported models. Uh, we looked at CEDAS and cooperatives and the like, but we really like this model from Claire's. It's simple and um, straightforward and it just seemed to make the most sense. So Claire's told us, well, you know, we didn't have to worry about the cash flow because it's really carefully structured. Everybody, they pay their thousand dollars and get their subscription because it's not technically a share. They don't own the company. Um, and then they get paid back in their food, but they get a coupon each month and then they have to use it within that month is sort of the idea. So we ended up, um, because people who were interested asked us to, we ended up adding a bit of a return on their investment. So they, they buy a thousand dollar subscription and they get $1,200 worth in food, but it's spread out over four years and sort of one coupon a month, or you can do over two months, you can do a $50 coupon. Um, So, uh, we launched the campaign using social media, and I, I can't say, I never really thought of myself as a very technological person, but um, I don't know how we could have done this without the internet. <laughs> Basically, I mean, the, the relationships had to be there initially, but in order to tell our story and get the word out, we used a blog, we used Facebook, we used email campaigns, and um, sure enough, it was fairly easy to sell our subscriptions. We were aiming to sell 50, we ended up selling 54, and sort of had to cut it off there. Um, so we had to, the only reason that this worked is you had to sort of tell the story about what you were wanting to do, and people have to kind of think that, oh, well that looks like something we'd like to see in our community too. So, um, the deal was people bought their subscriptions, if we got enough people to buy the subscriptions and were able to get the rest of our funding in place, um, then great. If we didn't get the rest of our funding, we'd give that $50,000 back to the community, or 54 as it, as it stood. Um, but if we got our funding, launched the business, and the business failed, just like in community-supported agriculture, the, the subscription buyers share in that risk. Um, so we wouldn't be able to refund them if the business launched and failed. So, why do CSRs work? Um, number one, they just make good business sense. Uh, it's access to low-cost capital, uh, and in our case with food, basically we're paying back $1,200 worth of food, but it basically costs us our food costs, more or less. Um, you're pre-selling your product, so you're making sure that there is, in fact, a demand for what you're trying to sell. Um, if you can't sell the shares to your subscription, then maybe you don't have the right idea, or maybe you're not in the right place or at the right time. And you're building a client base uh, before you even open. So I can't tell you how much that took um, at least a little bit of the terror out of opening a business in town, just knowing you've got this group of people that believe in your idea, believe enough in you to contribute to your idea, and would like to see you do well. Um, so the accountants and the bankers and the business development people that we brought this idea to, to say like, do you think this could work, or we want to use this model, they were all really excited about the model and thought, why doesn't everybody do this? Um, secondly, the big thing about CSRs is they really get the funding ball rolling. So, although the Suds Club, which is what we ended up calling our, our subscription campaign, um, it brought in $50,000, but that's still only about 10% of our actual startup costs to get the business up and running. However, having that demonstration of support from the community and, and the commitment that they're willing to put their own money into it, plus a hefty business plan that we spent quite a lot of time on, it made it a lot easier for us to access more traditional funding um, we got loans from other community members, and in the end, we were able to get a mortgage through the Virgin Green Credit Union. Um, so that, that small investment made it possible 
to get the rest of the money we needed to start the business. Um, the third thing about CSRs and why they work is a little less um, tangible, but I really believe it helps build the local food and agricultural economy. So you're sourcing from local suppliers. The focus with the CSR, I mean, you're not going to start a fast food chain using a CSR probably. They tend to be smaller businesses that have a close connection to the community. Um, so we have all kinds of great relationships with our suppliers that are sort of symbiotic. We buy beer from Big Spruce in Cape Breton, but they also pick up beer from another brewery in Halifax for us and drop it back on their way back from delivering their beer. Um, we have servers who supply us food for the restaurant. We have customers that supply us with food for the restaurant. Um, and this is just one example, CSRs, or one example of a whole lot of new sort of alternative startup models that are being used all over to start small sort of agricultural and food related businesses. So another bonus is you get a lot of free publicity for using an unusual model. And that's something Claire said they had gotten way more attention than they ever expected just because it was kind of a unique idea. Um, so we got mentioned in national publications that never would have otherwise been interested in a small restaurant opening up in a small town. And the best thing about CSR is that it allows normal people, like Terry and I, who didn't have business degrees, didn't have investment portfolios or $200,000 in the bank, to start a business. Um, the townhouse now has three years under our belt. We seat 60 people. We employ 14 to 18 people. Six to eight of them are full-time. We buy from about 26 small producers and processors and nine microbreweries regularly. For the most part, these are all family-run small businesses that are doing really great sustainable work. Um, we host local food events, we promote our producers, we host community events whenever we can, um, and we are so incredibly grateful to all our Suds Club members, the people that bought in uh, from day one and gave us the chance to start this. Um, so as I mentioned, we've been open for three years, we're about to print our final year of subscription coupons, so it looks like everybody's going to get their money back that invested. Anyway, so that's CSRs. Thank you.